So you got you got more than just a notch on your belt. Right. Play nice. Three, two, one, go. Oh, we don't have the bubble. Trying to gather space control with bubble, I've noticed from a uh, couple of. Uh, it's been a very recent development for SpongeBob players because it helps you with uh, having a sort of safe lateral charge, which is very useful against me. But of course, you get your opponent above you, the damage to follow. Yeah, I like the finisher with the initial finisher with that F strong, uh, with the neutral strong, trying to maintain as much damage as possible into the um, uh, potential DI mix up from the up strong. I mean, you're probably DI for that anyway, but just clean stuff from from your man, trying to just to mix up your conversions as much as possible. And you know he's got these conversions on lock, because that was just a stock gone as I talk. <laughs> It's just very confident play, and being able to control that platform on Jellyfish Fields guarantees that you have that verticality behind the pressure. For the Legend Hang, not res uh, able to respect the recovery enough, it's just looking for a, a more of a ledge trap instead. Oh, into that little sweep, that was unique. <laughs> This is looking like an incredibly strong game for Mirror Mountain right at the gate, but Rosé not out of it just yet. Potentially on par though, if we keep on getting uh, these guys in the another... <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, if it works, you can imagine it. I... <laughs> wow. That was a game. Yeah, no, Mirror Mountain just had it down. Had where to be, what to do, what time. I love, uh, like, in a, such a fast-paced, like, aerial-based game where you're just, like, you're constantly jumping, doing these neutralizers, doing these forwards, doing these uh, up airs, like, all over the place. The fact that he took a moment just to walk backwards a little bit, get that grab, again, again. And here we have, in that, in game two, our first sight of rooftop room. Alright, so... I do like this as a choice because the fact that it's a little bit more laterally oriented is going to give a bit more options for Roche to find landings. At the same time, depending on how well Roche can stop Pyramid's use of the bubble, like, is going to really dictate if you're going to be able to stop Miraman from just moving along anyways. Here's the first chance for Miraman, uh, for Roche to actually get something going and gets a whole 106 out of it after a multitude of uh, chance after a multitude of getting blown up by Mirror Man. This is a big one for Roche and he's not letting it slide so easily. He gets a grab in midair that was so clean. That was a hell of a reaction too. Alright. Well, the stage deck proving its value right away from Roche. Just fantastic use from the fly and then just playing off the ledge. Also the fact that it's a bit of a larger stage. So like you do have a little bit more wiggle room to work with, but as we've already established, Egg is hyper mobile. Okay. Like he doesn't matter where you are, like he will get to you. I love how both of them are just using this uh, center platform just to add to the mobility, just using a plenty of, uh, of uh, platform drops as that neutral strong is able to come out in full force, calling out the initial recovery route. Super clean stuff from Mirror Man, and now we get to see that weed dissipate. Oh, what a combo! <laughs> and it ends out in Rose J favor! You this can't be dropping those! That was looking fantastic for Mirror Man! Rose saw the opportunity to escape and swung right out of disadvantage. And he's not slowing down at all! Look at this! Yeah, it just keeps going, and the cleanness of finding just multiple ways to extend combo off, off of Tech Chase. Another one that time calling out the neutral tech, but misses the finisher and gets clobbered for it. That was a really good series of chances on special speed yourself back. Looking for the ledge hog and the roll in, but not finding either is Mirror Man. How often do you, do you get the chance to cover? You do! Great stalls from Rose J. Holding onto this lead as much as possible, because we can see what Mirror Man can do at zero in another great match. Just does not want to give Mirror Man any room to potentially take back this game. Alright. And there's the second grab and throw, and there we go. We're going into game three. That's so clean. Just finding that mid-air grab right off the ledge. I mean, you see that SpongeBob often takes a little bit of time in order to actually snap to ledge. And it's mobile enough to get there and back probably three times over. Yeah. 
be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure if Mirror Man was really ready for all of that play on rooftop. Like, moving right on back to Jellyfish Shield makes a world of sense, because that was just picture-perfect play. I mean, it goes to show how practicing on different stages and playing on different stages ends up making the most, because you have that counterpick viability. That being said, on a stage like this, neutral seems to often favor Mirror Man, as we do get this 1-1 one -one set. Yeah, and just immediate out the gate for pressure from Mirror Man makes it look so good. Like, figuring out a way to take back that platform is going to be the prerogative for Mirror Show. He can't even his resources back? No, he only has the up special. Great grab before they landed. Clean stuff on Rose Jade to even this up as much as possible. And, and it's certainly even, and then some mashing there out of hit stun. Okay. Yeah, I suppose if you're going to press any button, you might as well be the one that leads you into your kills. Yeah, great play from Mirror Man. It was different from the uh, from how he was just trying to escape combos even in game one, but any, ad any adaptation like that certainly makes the difference because he was able to convert that into a whole kill combo and more. That was great DI, but wow! Rosé is on borrowed time after that one. 100 to, to only stalker to go. Rose needs something. Going to the other side. I mean, if you have that option available to you, avoid Sledge Hang and still finds the grab and should be able to recover. Get up attack home. This option coverage upon option coverage when it comes to Mirror Man. They are taking their time with this stock. And they need to because even the tiniest of overextensions, again, that gives so much room for Roche to be able to not just take the stock, but potentially have enough momentum to take back the game. Anything for Mirror Man, though, not going to be giving that opportunity. Yeah, playing it super strong towards the end is this. What happened? Seems like it is a best of five. Question mark. Hey, yo, do we just don't omit? Alright. Everything we were told was wrong. Yeah, we, we have been lied to. They put headsets on us and filled our ears with lies! But Game 4 is bringing us to Harmonic Convergence, and that's a good place to be if you are Roaster. There's no platform for SpongeBob to uh, find combo extensions, nor extend pressure with. Just finding safety at the ledge is going to be prerogative. Absolutely. And you just have so much room to work with uh, going back and forth, so you don't have to always feel like you're putting yourself in the corner. And these nair chains only end up mattering more because you're able to get that many more nairs. Oh, we the up strong uh, whiffed, eventually getting the neutral strong in the grounds. Good play. But now, can Rose J keep the lead? Proving to be difficult for a lot of players today, as we've seen, as you put it best, a constant call and response, especially with the heavy-handed play off the uh, platform, the spawn platform. Finds a couple blocks, but unable to really get a punish afterward as Airman is kind of struggling a little bit to find that stock at the up strong afterwards. Super clean conversion on Rose Chase part. Stage difference mattering so much more. I mean, I don't know if there's any sort of bans or DSR, but you may want to consider getting rid of Jellyfish Fields, given how Rose J's performance on other stages has been immaculate. Yeah, given that there's four stages to play on, there are no bans, so that's right. you got to work with what you got. And playing it out on Jellyfish Fields is proving to be uh, difficult for Rose J, but hey, at least your counterpicks are looking golden. Yeah, that, in the same vein, that was a very early stock acquired from Mirror Man, and they're able to find some of these chains to get it going, but there's the neutral strong. See if they can do this ledge, getting a nice grab. Yup! Miss space it ever so slightly, and that grab, scoop him up and throw him. No, uh, absolutely zero resources left to find any sort of recovery. Because we have got our first game, apparently, game five <laughs> set. <laughs> Hey, I'll take it. It's good play, w so no skin off our back. And we end two, things off on Urken Armada Invasion. Honestly, this makes sense. Given the fact that um, a lot of the strength that we've seen behind Mirror Man's play on Jellyfish Fields has to do with the verticality of the platforms, what better way than just more platforms going up? Yeah, I mean, totally 
way fair because now you don't have to end your combos prematurely. But the same thing can be said for Roche, able to find not one but two platformer extensions into that upstrong, which actually ends up making the difference because most of the time his combos into upstrong would end with upstrong being a little bit too far out. Uh, the DI being a too far wide, that's time you have some space to move a little bit more forward before finishing that combo. Yeah, that was a very big deal for Roche, being able to assert that dominance on the top line, because now that's something that Mirror Man has to worry about. But moving forward, like, do you want to keep all of that pressure moving upwards? If you're going to do so, you need to make sure that there's no opportunity for Ank to turn reversals. I'm seeing a little bit of struggle with getting the, uh, the kill. Substrong's not doing enough for Mirror Man. I know that we uh, we keep mentioning how fast this game is, and it certainly is played at an extremely high tempo. But I like how Rose J has slowed it down in this game, using that top platform and just these side platforms for more ways to recover. And Ang certainly has a very modular recovery. At 162, you can take your time and a half. This is a fantastic DI from here, man, by the way. Like, it was very much a stock that never was. But to go to the ledge a little too early gives Rose the opportunity to come on back and throwing the bubble to give your confirm. Excellent. We've seen a couple of times throughout this set that uh, Mirror Man's been trying to put out the bubble and like feign grabbing it, but then go in for the attack. Like here, actually making use of the bubble is keeping it, keeping Mirror Man in the running, but still full stock behind. Love the delay on the get up attack, but it looks like that mirror man had that scout at the end. Recover keeps him alive. 57 is a solid combo, but nothing that uh, Rose J has proven unable to do. Just, just back and forth answer and calling and responding, but it really is on the own Ionis of Mirror Man to make something happen here. Just missing this, uh, the interception on that recovery. So Roche will take that and run with it. Big opportunity here. There it is. The upstart going to be able to tie up the stocks. This is still very doable for Mirror Man. Just can't afford to get hit because you know Roche is going to make that one touch. And... Absolutely. It looks like Mirror Man is not getting the tickles in that he wanted so much in game one. It's the throw downwards. Oh, he's the chains. Yeah, keeps him alive, getting back to center with that, uh, with the air scooter, and the grab! Scooped right out of the air! And Mirror Man falls! It's gonna be a 3-2 victory for...